Hello and welcome to Guessing the Methods Exam. This is part four. As always, it's brought to you by these fantastic people, my past students. Uh, they've got this tutoring company. It's fantastic. Uh, I was speaking to them yesterday. They said heaps of you have come onto their website and signed up for the little newsletter thingy. If you haven't already, what are you doing? Sign up for it. First question. Let's go. Tech Active. Try it. And then I'm going to do it. Okay, uh, what have we got? 35% uh, chance, feels like a binomial probability, uh, and they're asking for the standard deviation. All right, formula sheet, please. Here we are. Uh, now, the formula sheet doesn't have standard deviation on it. It has variance on it. But remember that standard deviation is the square root of variance. So we're just going to do standard deviation is equal to the square root of n number of trials, 15 traffic lights, probability of success, 0.35 times 1 minus p, probability of failure, 0.65. Type it into your calculator. There it is, 1.8473, option D, done, celebrate. That was a quick one. Next question. All right, here we have it. Try it out yourself, and then I'm going to go for it. All right, what do we got? Uh, an object's velocity is given by this function uh, between 0 and 3 pi. Oh, this is a tech active one. I've got a function. Maybe I should just graph it. All right, so I've done it. 2 sine x. Let's graph that, see what it looks like. Oh, dear. All right, why don't we just try an auto zoom, see if that helps. Now, if you're not screaming at your screen, you should be. Because it looks like I'm in degrees mode. So let's get into radians mode. There it is. All right, radians. All right, let's try it again. Oh, there we go. Why don't we try another auto zoom, see if that fixes it. All right, pretty good. Um, now, the interval is between 0 and 3 pi. So let's do a little view window here. An x minimum of like, I like to put like negative 0 0.5, just so I'm a little bit to the left so I can see the y axis. And a max, this is up to 3 pi here, so I'm just going to write uh, 3 shift pi plus 0.4, just to add a bit onto the end of it. Okay, um, let's take a look at that. All right, so that's sort of what we're dealing with here. Just put a little bit extra on the ends. Okay, that is the velocity function. This says, determine the distance traveled over the provided time interval. So a key idea here, and something that a lot of people don't grab hold of when they're learning this stuff, is that the total amount of change is equal to the area under the curve. Okay, so this is the velocity, right, and the total amount of change is the area under there. Now we are going to have to be a little bit careful here, so watch what happens when I graph between 0 and 3 pi, when I find the area under the curve. All right, I'm going to G solve it, I'm going to do an integral, all right, and I'm going to integrate between, just type in the value, 0 and 3 pi. So, it's going to be very tempting to look at this number 4 here and believe that that's the answer. It is not the answer. It is not the answer. Why is that not the answer? Well, let's take a look at what an integral actually does. What it finds is the net area. When I look at this graph here, what it spits out is a positive value here, a negative value here, and a positive value here. And when we integrate between here and here, we're finding the signed area. So we're finding this area plus this area and minus that area. But if we want to know the total distance traveled by this object, what we're going to need is this area plus this area plus this area. So let's ask our calculator to do just a little more work for us. All right, so I've cleared it and I've gone again. Let's G solve our, inter, our integral, but let's just go from here to here. Let's just go from zero 
Oh, let's just go from zero to pi. That's four, right there. The area of that is four. Now, because the fact that um, trig functions are periodic, if that's four, I can do it on my calculator, but you could also just believe me. That's also gonna be four, and that's also gonna be four. Those three areas added together are going to give us our total of 12. And that's our answer. I do want to talk about this just a bit more because maybe you didn't want to do areas under curves. So you could have done this question a different way. You could have said, okay, that's the velocity function. But I don't care about velocity. I care about distance. So if I integrate the velocity function, um, I'll get the displacement function, right? So if I do the integral of two sine t with respect to t, I'll know the displacement function. Now the integral of that is relatively straightforward, negative forward, negative two cos t plus c. Now, it, it doesn't matter what the original displacement is, right? So we can just let c equal zero here. Because we just want to know how far did it travel in its journey. Okay, uh, now if you graph negative 2 cos x, you get a graph that looks like that, very similar to the last one, but it's not showing the velocity anymore. It's showing the displacement, right? So at time 0, it was minus 2. It was like, I guess if this is the origin, it was 2 units back from the origin, right? And then it travelled to the origin... And then it came, it got all the way past the origin. So negative 2, origin, origin, and then 2. So it's travelled 4 units. And then it's gone from there back to the origin and back to negative 2. It's travelled 8 units. And then 2 more units and then 2 more units. Alright, so it's gone boom, boom, boom. It's done laps. 4, 8, 12. So... That is the question. Got to be super careful with these questions, though, because it might have said something like, determine the total displacement of the object, right? How far, how different is its starting position from its ending position, right? If that was the case, the answer would be 4, because it started at negative 2, and it finished at positive 2. So you should have gone through the differences between distance and displacement. This is a good example of it. Trick question. I like it. Celebrate. Next question. All right, nice, easy, straightforward. We've got a triangle here. Have a try. Okay, so I've already got a picture, but you know me. I'm going to draw a picture as well. I've got a triangle. Uh, I've got this angle here. It's 52 degrees. And it's isosceles, and that's 8, which means that's 8. What else do I know? I know that that's 52 degrees. And then it shouldn't take me too long to figure out that 52 plus 52 is 104. And that must be 76, because the internal angles of a triangle add up to 180. I've got so much stuff there. If I had a formula... There we go. The area of a triangle is equal to half of two sides, so 8 times 8 sine the angle included, right? Some people would make a mistake here and use one of these angles, but if you're going to use two sides, it's got to be the included angle. So, 76. Type that into your calculator. Here's one I prepared earlier. I get 31.04. Nine. That is very, very close to 31.05. I like that one. Then you do have to, like, think a little bit. Um, hey, you know what? Why don't you draw a picture? All right, celebrate, and let's do the next question. All right, so first short response. It is tech active. Have a try. All right, I'm going to jump into it. Now, at the risk of being a broken record... When it comes to normal distributions, if you do not, what are you doing? Seriously. Okay, so we have a normal distribution. We have a mean of 78. 
And what I like to do with my standard deviation is just kind of draw it in as this weird kind of like, boop, nine, right? Because that tells us how spread out this is. Okay. Determine the probability that a randomly selected patient is over the age of 85. All right, so 85 is about there, and we want over the age of 85. Drawing a picture, you can't, you can't make a mistake, right? All right, so we want, let's write an equation. We want the probability that x is greater than 85. And now we can just type that into our calculator. Okay, so I'm in stats mode, uh, distributions, I want a normal distribution, and NCD. Alright, I want a variable, so I better go to F2 there. Alright, what is our lower value? It's in your picture, right? That's, that's why we've done it this way. Our picture will tell us what to do. 85 is our lower bound. Our upper bound, just put a big number in there. Like, that'll do. Um... Now, a standard deviation of 9 and a mean of 78. Okay, my answer here um, is 0 0.2183. Once I round it, it's 0 0.2184. Why do, I, why do I draw pictures? Well, because now I can double check that this feels right, right? I've drawn my picture, I want more than 85. Half the whole area is one, half of it's 50%. I've done this much, so yeah, 21, 22%. That feels right to me. I'm feeling very confident that that's the correct answer. Um, okay, what else are we doing? Uh, a study is being performed to investigate the patients in the lower quartile, the lower 25%. Determine the maximum age of the participants in this study. Okay, so it just seems like we're like reversing the process, so why not? Here we go, 78, we've got a little 9 here. Now we want to find the lowest quartile of ages, the lowest ages. So that means that we want the area from there to there to be 25%, or 0.25, don't worry about this percent business. 0.25, that's what that area needs to be. Now that we've drawn the picture, let's formalize it with some, like, stuff. We want the probability that x is less than c to be equal to 0 0.25. And we're going to solve for c. To do that, calculator. We're in our stats mode again. We're doing distributions, normal distributions, but an inverse this time. Okay, depending on your calculator, it works different ways, but this one's quite nice. We're going to go with a left tail. That's why we draw pictures. Uh, we want an area of 0 0.25. Uh, we want the same standard deviation and mean from our previous one. So that's good there. Take a look. 71.93. C equals 71.93. So we're asked to determine the maximum age. If you accept 72-year-olds, you're accepting too many people. So the maximum age would be 71. Even if you do accept all the 71 year olds, technically you're gonna have more than 0.25, right? Because you kind of can only accept 71 and whatever 93% of a year is. You can only accept those people. But I think it's enough to say that we can accept 71 year olds, reject 72 year olds. All right, I think that was a pretty fun one, pretty lightweight. Uh, let's see how the next one goes. Celebrate your wins. Let's go. All right, <laughs> big one. Have a read, pause it, have a go, see what you think. Okay, I'm going to try this. Now, it's no surprise, kind of a theme for the day. We're going to draw a picture here um, because there's a lot going on, right? So we've got a cliff, an apple tree. A monkey. Okay. Now, the monkey is sitting on, the monkey jumps, the apple falls. Um, it has an initial velocity, initial velocity of three. Okay. Uh, oopsie. That's better. All right. Now, 200 meters below, there's a hippo. Okay. There's my hippo. Uh, 200 meters. 
um, if the apple is traveling at 150 meters per second or more, the hippo will get an ouchie. All right, we know that gravity is accelerating this object at 9.8 meters per second per second. Uh, let's figure out whether the hippo gets an ouchie. Okay, uh, we need to figure out everything we can about this apple. Its acceleration, its velocity, and its displacement, I think. Uh, so let's go with that. So acceleration is equal to, it's accelerating downwards with the force of gravity, so negative 9.8. That's a constant. All right, uh, the velocity is going to be equal to the integral of acceleration. That's going to be negative 9.8t plus c. Okay, hmm. Now, at time zero, the initial velocity is 3, but 3 downwards, right? So it should actually be negative 3. Not v equals 3, v equals negative 3. At time 0, so if we sub 0 in there, let's do it real quick, negative 9.80 plus c, the velocity is negative 3. So from there, it's easy to see that negative 3 equals 0 plus c, so c equals negative 3. So super straightforward, we can get rid of that. Now that we've got a velocity function, not hard to find a displacement function. It's going to be the integral of that. So negative 9.8t squared on 2 minus 3t plus c. And then the question is, like, where, what's c? What's our initial displacement? Well, it really depends on where you put your origin. Uh, you could put your origin here, or you could put your origin here. I'm going to put my origin there. It won't matter what you choose. Um, you've just got to be consistent throughout. So if that's my original, my origin, 0, 0, then my initial displacement is 200 above that. So uh, when time is equal to 0, when time is equal to 0, x is equal to 200. Therefore, c is equal to 200. So I have a displacement function of negative 9.8 divided by 2, is negative 4.9 t squared minus 3t plus 200. All right, this is fantastic news because now I have an acceleration function, a velocity function, and a displacement function. Have I given any thought to what I need to do with these? No, I haven't. Uh, it's an important idea that you should embrace that when you get questions like this, just start doing something. Don't think too hard about it. Think, oh, I can do a thing. And then you can think about, once I've done those things, what am I going to do with it? Uh, it says, uh, if the apple is traveling at 150 meters per second on impact, the hippo will get an ouchie. So I want to know, what is its velocity when it hits that hippo? Okay, uh, well, the velocity function is v equals something like t. So I need to know what time it hits the hippo. In order for me to know what time it hits the hippo, I need to know what time it hits the ground, right? I need to know what time it's there. So in order to do that, I can do this displacement here. So I'm going to, let's, let's write a little note to ourselves. I'm going to find t when um, the displacement, when x equals 0, when the displacement equals 0. All right, so zero equals this. Now, it's a tech active exam, so you really want to have a go at this on your calculator. All right, so I've typed that in here. Now, you just need to be careful, right, because this was like in terms of x and t, but when we graph it, we need like y and, and x. All right, so I'm graphing it. I'm drawing it. All right, that makes sense, a graph that goes... And it looks like it's going to hit the ground around, six, around the six-second mark. Uh, let's do a little G-solve to figure that out. 6.0899. So there's my answer. That's the correct answer, right? Now, I'm going to be interested. I'm throwing it to the comments here. Teachers, if you're watching this, comment. Uh, let me know what you think here. I think that's all I need to write. Some people might say that you need to move your graph over like I've moved it over here and find the 
negative time and then reject the negative time. Say t equals this or this other weird negative time and then reject the negative time. I don't think you need to do that, uh, but I'd be interested to hear what you all think you should be doing because maybe I'm wrong. Regardless, I've got my value. The time when it's going to hit the hippo is 6.08997. Now I want to know the velocity when it hits the hippo. So I just need to sub that into my velocity function. So velocity is equal to negative 9.8 times the time when it hits the hippo minus 3. Calculator. So I typed it in and I got a velocity when it hits the hippo of neg negative 62.68. Um, okay, so that means that the speed at which it's traveling, the speed, is just 62.68. Okay, so you really need to make sure that you read the question because the question is asking you, does the hippo get an ouchie, right? And so we really need to write a statement saying no ouchie, no ouchie because 62.68 is less than 150. And I am very happy about that. I was very concerned for my hippo. He's already living without a head. He doesn't need an ouchie on top of that. Celebration. All right, that's been part four of guessing the methods exam. Big thank you as always to my past students. Fantastic work. Good questions. Loved it. Um, go and check them out. Website's awesome. The newsletter's amazing. Go sign up. See you next time when we're going to be doing some tech free.